Hello, you're very welcome to a special extra edition of the Overlap Rugby podcast. I uh, didn't have time to cover this in the podcast, but we are now going to take some time mm-hmm. and look ahead to tomorrow's Pro 14 final. Yeah. Yes, it's a bit early for the business end of the season, but here we are. That's right. With a, yeah. uh, with a, with a March final in the Pro 14. It is, uh, needless to say, it's box office. It's Leinster against Munster. Mm-hmm. This is going to be 5 p.m. local time Saturday. That's tomorrow, obviously, tomorrow evening uh, in the RDS in Dublin. Leinster's stomping ground, our old stomping ground, Indeed, as we know yeah. so well. Um, Mike, Adis- Mike Adamson of uh, Scottish Rugby Union is going to be the referee. Um, as far as the weather is concerned, it's going to be, you know, uh, b- potentially a bit iffy. I mean, I'm looking out at the moment. It's kind of a nice afternoon, and they said it would be iffy. So yeah, the weather, the weather's up in the air. It, could, it's, could be, yeah. it's Ireland. It could be any one of the four seasons. Yeah. So um, they may have rain. to adapt. Ch- chance of rain, chance of wind, chance of sun, chance of cloud, yeah. chance of all of the above within the 80 minutes that are played that the rugby match is played <laughs> in. So uh, yeah, the conditions could be changeable but both sides are used to it so uh wouldn't wouldn't think it'd be too much of a factor in terms of their prep anyway no indeed no indeed so it's yeah it's, it's finals footy between these two uh between these two great historical rivals uh for, for the uninitiated this is i would say even as an irish fan obviously things get a little blinkered but i would say this is one of the biggest uh you know club domestic rivalries that is in world rugby it's, yeah i would say so it's got a lot of history to it and it dates back to 1879 i have here that's, uh, cool. that's when the two uh provincial sides were founded they played each other in that year and yeah. um, they've played games on an annual basis uh, ever since the in- inception of the irish interprovincial championship in 1946 there you go and uh since that time leinster have a 55 to 43 advantage in the overall standings um, and additionally, um, since the inception of the Celtic League in the beginning of the pref- professional era, 2001-2002 season, Leinster have a 28-16 to advantage over Munster. Yeah. Um, yeah, the two sides do face each other pretty regularly now since the Pro 14, or in the Pro 14. Um, and since the inception of that tournament, the two of them have be pretty consistently been two of the strongest teams in the tournament, uh, with Leinster reaching 12 finals and winning seven, and uh, Munster reaching seven finals and winning three. Um, Munster finished uh, in the top two in the Pro 14 Championship twice with Leinster defeating Munster 24-20 in 2002 uh, and Munster winning 19-9 in the 2011 final that's right um, that's right uh, Leinster on course now for a sixth straight victory over Munster which should actually break the record in the history of this rivalry yeah. they've done five straight once before they're on that at the moment if they would take a win here they would push ahead to the, the biggest ever streak in the history of this rivalry that would very much vex the men from the southern in Providence, I would imagine. <laughs> I would imagine that's definitely right. And uh, Leinster have also can beaten Munster in three consecutive semi-finals in this competition. So last season, the season before, and the season before that, yeah. Munster's season came to an end at the hands of Leinster at, at the semi-final stage. Yeah. On that occasion, as well as them taking that personally, that goes to a kind of more macro thing with Munster's semi-final and finals record as well which yes. is, is kind of dubious just outside of the Leinster Munster um, record in recent times in the last decade really they've, uh, totally. they've been very impressive in the regular season and just not quite got it done at the business end 100% 100% um, obviously for Leinster this is just about this game is it's not a small game it's a final it's about collecting silverware mm-hmm. trophies Leinster are, are side that judge themselves on silverware they they certainly have a, a established themselves as one of the true sort of aristocrats of European rugby and certainly of 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 Pro Fourteen rugby, mm-hmm. uh, nothing but but a, but a success in this uh, in this competition does for them. Yeah, obviously Munster are the team with the, the that pose the biggest threat to Leinster's standing. I would say is the biggest uh, province in in this competition. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, the biggest club side in it. So it's 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 got big, big uh, you know big big stakes uh, on it from that point of view. And obviously silverware, silverware. You always want to win silverware. Yeah, uh, and that's very much Leinster's. Um, that's very much Leinster's priority. Um. Yeah, but it's also Munster's priority. The equation yeah. is different, but the, the priority is much the same. For Leinster, you're thinking like uh, the, win, collecting silverware is what they're all about. Uh, and as much as they, they would love to collect this the mo- and take the momentum forward, it wouldn't be the positive effect wouldn't be quite as bu- much as the negative effect would be if they lose, yeah. where they'll be like, okay, we won as we expected, whereas if they lost, it would be absolutely back-to-back losses and unprecedented and then go into Europe in a terrible state of affairs. For Munster, the equation is that they are just, they're one of the biggest, most famous club sides in world, uh, world rugby. They've beaten the All Blacks. They have such a legacy. Uh, yeah. They have a lot of pedigree. 
but uh, they haven't haven't won a trophy in the last ten years. Um, yeah. Not since that since that uh, ninety nine Pro Twelve vi- final victory against Leinster in Tolman Park. So I, was, I was actually there. Um, yeah, um, ten years ago. Um, <laughs> such as I was, that was uh, I was I was present. Yeah, no, last time the, a Munster team lifted a trophy. They were they were the better <laughs> team that day. Leinster oh, had yeah. had just played in was it the Heineken Cup final uh, the right. week prior, and and there was definitely a little bit of goofballery that was on show from them. But, uh, but Munster just played a better game. The Munster played a very sharp game, and they'll mm. need something similar. So Sort of catch Leinster cold, play with a bit of direction. Leinster on that occasion were they were dazzling in moments, but overall were kind of just at sea. I think O'Driscoll had a couple of very nice touches, yeah, as he always did. Well, but sure, you were you were citing were... the issue pre kickoff of Jamie Heaslip practicing drop goals. And you're mm. like, wait a minute. He doesn't do that. Yes. What are we doing? <laughs> no, indeed. And, and well beaten on that occasion. Yeah. But it has been barren now for Munster since, you know, um, you were citing their, their finals footy record. They've lost five since this uh, that 2011 uh, occasion when they last lifted a trophy. They've lost five Pro 14 semifinals and two finals. Um, they've lost in Europe five semi-final yeah. defeats as well. Without, those, are, those are kind of the more more jilting ones, even yeah, but, without uh, making the final. So they've won two semi-finals and lost ten in all competitions in the last decade and never won a final. Yeah, so it's it, it's not obviously good. pretty brut- brutal. I mean, the teams that Munster have had over the last ten years, they've been characterized by sort of a slow, forward-oriented, kick-heavy kind of game. A lot of grit and a tough edge. And in many ways, you know, in some of those European semi-finals, they did extremely well to get there. Showed a lot of grit to get there, mm-hmm. um, but always when they reached the highest level and they played sides like Leinster and sides like Saracens and sides like Clermont, yeah. they were kind of found out uh, just for not having that extra gear. step, uh, yeah. extra gear, and that capacity that bit, to find cheap scores. Very yeah, quickly they, as the well, offense yeah. struggled. Like they a mm-hmm. bit like Ireland, that you felt that they had to really get on top of a team uh, up front to, to win a game and whenever they didn't do that they found themselves stalling and just losing out to a, to a clutch score here or there they just mm. did, didn't, didn't have, haven't had enough on offence but uh, there are signs that yeah, this is changing there's, there's more firepower to this team though yeah. I, I think that that's a little bit of an historical precedent rather than an actual current thing because like uh, on recent Pro 14 form Munster are throwing the ball around more than this Leinster team to be honest they're throwing a few yeah. more offloads they're accessing the wide channels more it's Leinster the ones are playing the more bludgeoning more forward forward oriented certainly if you're just looking on recent Pro 14 form which granted is a little patchy for both because there's a, a rake of Irish internationals who are pumped back into both sides which will change the dynamic yeah. of how they play but uh, but yeah no, Munster have been moving the ball quite nicely there have been a few lovely scores Joey Carberry against Cardiff with that little oh, kind yeah. of scything run or was it no it was Scarlet's I think in that case and scything score, through yeah. a lovely score Ben Healy's had some nice touches as well Dale Indy getting the outside and getting offloads away Gavin Coombs yeah. end of the season um, there's a lot there's a lot of good in this Munster side and, and definitely with, with guys like well, you have JJ Hanrahan already there but you have now options of Carberry and Ben Healy mm. They've they, considering how woe begotten they were at 10 and uh, in years gone by they now seem to have a fair bit of talent there and they have young Casey as well as backup to Murray there's just a fair bit of quality there's more quality in this Munster team than a lot of those teams from the last decade I would think yeah and obviously they have a bit of pedigree this year they pulled off an incredible comeback against Claremont after going miles behind showed great con- composure in that game yeah that was probably the game of the, the, the yeah. tournament so far in the European Cup yeah indeed indeed and they, they breezed through the regular season obviously you know we've talked about semi-finals and, and, and spotty enough league finishes they've been breezed through it with like a Leinster like efficiency this year they've been comparable in terms of how they've swatted aside all that's come before them yeah obviously had that narrow loss to Leinster earlier in the year they did that and was, a few uh, scares they had to, had to find themselves having to kick a clutch drop goal out in Benetton to nick that result but a lot of teams like, find themselves <laughs> yeah. in such weird positions in Benetton that is true but uh, yeah they, they, they've been they've been in fine fettle this year they have and uh, they will be determined to, to right the wrongs of the last decade I think they're desperate for some silverware now and mm-hmm. uh, the fact that Billy Holland uh, is moving on the fact that CJ Stander is moving on JJ and now JJ Hanrahan, Hanrahan as yeah. well is off to Clermont yeah um, that just puts highlights sort of the need that this team has to, to deliver on, on some good promise yeah and, and they're certainly the more the more desperate side for silverware yeah, would definitely yeah. be Munster I would think and that, that can give them an edge that definitely if, if Leinster are a little slow to start that could definitely be the difference by the end if, if Munster are to be successful just that hunger alone yeah absolutely couldn't agree more mm. uh, listen just to take a look at the match day squads um, we have them now here of, as it is on Friday afternoon um, yeah Leinster's 23 that they've named they bring in uh, both sides bring in back uh, a load of uh, Ireland internationals Leinster starting with Keane Healy Ronan Kelleher at hooker Andrew Porter uh, Dev Toner and Scott Fardy in the mm-hmm. second rows 
Ruddock, Van der Fleer and Conan make yeah. a very good back row. Um, they've gone with Luton Grand, Ross Byrne at, at halfbacks with uh, Sexton and Gibson Park to come on. Mm-hmm. Uh, then they've got Henshaw and Rory O'Loughlin in the midfield with Dave Carney, Jordan Larmer and Hugo Keenan at fullback. Mm-hmm. Uh, the bench, Tr- James Tracy covering Hooker, Ed Byrne covering Loosehead, Ty Furlong on the bench, yeah. uh, Ross Maloney uh, covering Locke, Ryan Baird covering Locke and back row, I guess. And then Gibson Park, Sexton, as I say, and James Lowe as well. It's a pretty good impact um, on that bench, to be fair. Yeah, it's a good team. It's yeah. an, it, um, I have some hesitance just about the uh, sort of... 10, 9, 10, 13 9, 10, access. 12, 13. Yeah. Yeah, I like Henshaw, obviously, he's in great form, but just perhaps, you know, the passing game isn't yeah. great from those guys. Well, particularly um, Luke McGrath and Ross Byrne as a, as a halfback pairing are, can can be a little slow. They can, can be. Can be, and can be a little deep as well. And then you couple that with Robbie Henshaw uh, being, being a crash ball from 12 and Rory O'Loughlin at 13. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not quite... Uh, completely fully locked stocked in terms of what you'd expect to see in a Leinster midfield and uh, yeah, there could be potential trouble there but there is actually ample impact on that bench as well so yeah, huge impact you talk uh, about bringing on uh, Furlong Baird and then you know Gibson Park Sexton and Lowe to add impetus yeah. in the back line yeah, there's, there's a definitely a scope for a lot of last quarter uh, power in, in that yeah. uh, and just, just looking at uh, Munster's match day 23 as well because we also have that uh, Munster have named another very very strong side as well they, in the front row they have uh, James Cronin Niall Scannell and John Ryan which I think is their, their best currently Kilcoyne obviously uh, is just on the bench having returned to play um, the, the locks Jean Klein and Ty Byrne uh, with Gavin Coombs at 6 Peter O'Mahony and CJ Stander at 8 uh, that makes up the pack and then in the back line you have Connor Murray Joey Carberry uh, in the centres Dale Lindy and Farrell and then in the back three we have Keith Earls Andrew Conway and Mike Haley at fullback yeah, it's um, a very strong team it's very, I think that is as strong as they can feel given that Kilcoyne had to kind of just yeah. make, make it back in time and then on the bench you have Kevin O'Byrne covering Hooker Kilcoyne as I said and Stephen Archer are the props Billy Holland at 19 covering Locke uh, Jack O'Donoghue back row cover and in the back line Craig Casey JJ Hanrahan and Rory Scannell to come, yeah. come off the bench it's it's two very strong sides to be honest it's, a, it's as good a contest as you can see from the Pro 14 it's probably a worthy final just oh, looking, totally. at, looking at the calibre of those Two twenty threes, yeah, some, some some fantastic um, players in there. Certainly, Munster back their their half their starting halfbacks to be superior to Leinster's. Yeah, interesting to see the two um, huge, really the three hugely successful uh, positional switches that uh, were worked in the Ireland camp. I'm thinking like Ty Byrne to back row. I know he played lock against England, but thought he put in some great showings at back row, and that is his best position. Uh, then obviously. Um, you talk about uh, Robbie Henshaw uh, starting at 13 instead of 12 to help him have the defensive impact leading the line mm-hmm. and then obviously um, CJ Stander is a number 6 and it's weird like Gavin Coombs is a number 8 yeah. so they've moved Gavin Coombs from his primary position to accommodate moving CJ from his primary <laughs> position um, well they've, so, always, they've always done that they've yeah. had CJ at 8 for ages uh, like yeah. I don't mind it as much in Munster but I, do I think it's wrong I, still, I, I think think still think it's wrong I still, mm-hmm. still think it is wrong like you, you need your number 8 primarily should be a ball player should mm-hmm. be a passer um, not and Coombs just a hard is man. that Coombs yeah, is yeah. that Coombs has been very impressive all year but uh, you yeah, know CJ is your bona fide typical number six hard man that's what he is he's great at it yeah. but I just don't understand why we don't pick him there all the time but, yeah, it's de- uh, definitely yeah. a weird one and likewise Henshaw although I, I I definitely understand that selection in the context of having a Del Indy running down that channel Yeah, uh, might make sense for Henshaw to try and basically take away uh, it, it, it's going to be the high, the high high level uh, yeah. high calibre matchup of Del Indy versus Henshaw in just a little a little sneak peek of the many many issues or it, 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 it kind of instances of high level Irish versus high level South African contests that we will see for this year and all the years running up to the World Cup where they will be meeting in the groups as well yes, so yeah. there's Rainbow Cups and Lions Tours and all kinds of little South African Irish clashes and it's in this final you have Henshaw v Dale Indy which is seriously high level stuff in the centre um, yeah, no question. Um, so, just look. We're going to look ahead just now at the game itself and, and sort of look at the winning conditions for each side. Yeah. Uh, starting with the hosts, the table toppers. That's Leinster, Leinster. Uh, yeah. our boys, of course. As it will um, be in the RDS. Sadly, we won't be. Unfortunately. I know we really should be. It's it's kind of it's moments like these and weekends like these that uh, that definitely have me missing uh, attending rugby matches. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 is what it bummer. is. It is a bummer, but uh, not not to be there in a final in the RDS. We don't really get final in the RDS but uh, yeah. uh, listen it'll be it'll be a great occasion nonetheless and it's just great to have rugby there 
in general. Mm-hmm. Um, from Leinster's point of view, obviously, you know, you, you t- if you're a casual fan who glances at the Pro uh, 14 12, uh, Pro 14 table, there isn't, you know, you don't see much of a problem. They're, you know, number one in terms of points accrued, number one in terms of try difference, tries scored, comfortably ahead of Munster and Ulster. Um, you know, they've, they've obviously they had that loss last week to the Ospreys, but and you know, they had a loss to Connacht earlier in the season, so it's two defeats on the season. Two but. defeats on the season, which is the same as Munster, but in terms of the stats, they're ahead of them and all of that. Um, but I don't think that tells the whole story. I think um, they've they've stuttered a bit at times in terms of the quality of their performance. They've played a slower, more forward oriented uh, brand. Yeah, and obviously uh, they'll be desperate to restore conference ne- confidence now after last week. Although, with the Irish internationals coming back, I'm not sure mm. how much of an issue that is. But what is an issue? Sorry to I'll let you go in a moment. But mm. uh, what is an issue for me is is the stylistic matchup of how Leinster are scoring tries versus this monster team, mm-hmm. and that's a pro- that's a puzzle that they'll have to solve because they got Luke McGrath, and Ross Byrne in a halfback. It's not it's not really a passing team and. You know they what they have done in the uh, in in terms of accruing tries in the pro in the pro 12, fourteen this season is just carrying multi phase slow sort of grinding multi phase that wears at their opposition yeah. and ends up yielding scores. Mm-hmm. Um, but Munster, you know, they're a big defensive team, nice and physical, huge jackal threat at the breakdown, yeah. and so on paper you'd worry about Leinster trying to operate a slow multi phase game against a team that sort of eats that up. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. I think in terms of just Leinster's passing, it's been affected partly by by personnel. Like we saw a few weeks ago, they went with the two burns the bro- harry and ross at 10 12 just because yeah. they do want that 10 12 axis they, they kind of are acknowledging that they want to move the ball like traditionally leinster are a more kind of flamboyant kind of tempo based but but offensive and wide team and they, they like to attack with clinicality and they haven't been in this uh kind of running during the six nations obviously the whole back line was was on duty for Ireland and then guys like Tyg Furlong and Porter as well and big mm. big pack leader as well as well as just the full back line were missing so there's definitely going to be a, a staggering effect and there was you saw some of those performances even getting away with some of those performances which Leinster tend to do in the regular season even yeah. in poor performances like they're, they're very often the other team just doesn't believe they can win like the case in point was the the game away in Dragons a few weeks ago where Leinster played a really poor game to be honest and, and they, they were there for the taking if Dragons wanted to and Dragons managed to get themselves into position to do it and then just kicked it off in the last phase rather yeah. than go for took it took their losing bonus took their losing bonus like, and, and there's little bits like that where just they, they're Leinster this, they're going for their fourth in a row in this league and there's a lot of a lot of other teams that are when they're fielding young teams and you had Richard Cockrell with Edinburgh earlier getting hosed earlier in the season and then saying like oh we can't compete with Leinster and there seems to be a bit of that where mm-hmm. other teams are just like oh we, we can't compete and that kind of allows you to get away with bad habits sometimes when you're playing as Leinster and hope like it seems that they recognise that anyway but uh, yeah I'm just wondering myself if they if they are going to try and bludgeon Munster to death and I think because I think Munster are more than more than capable of defending that what encourages me is just the impact that Leinster have on the bench because yeah. if that's failing there's scope to change it when you can bring there in is. halfbacks like Sexton and Gibson yeah, Park you can, and you can bring in James Lowe or someone you, you can up um, the tempo and with the introduction of Tyg Furlong you can yeah. you can vastly improve the multi-phase carry game in the red zone like you can mm-hmm. Munster could have def- been defending wave after wave of it but then he introduced Furlong into the mix yeah. and all of a sudden it becomes that bit more difficult yeah. but I do think especially in the early goings of the game Leinster need to be mindful that their their usual method of accruing tries might not be as successful yeah, against playing, this Munster defence playing into Munster's hands because you yeah. have to go poach machines like Ty Byrne out there and like Peter O'Mahony, Peter O'Mahony yeah. yeah so there's there's danger in contact all the time with Munster and, yeah. um, and they'll be game to hunt Leinster guys yeah uh, I, th- I think Leinster need to sort of think a little on the uh, the earlier game they had in the season which was a 15 to 13 win out in Tolman Park yeah. scrappy um, game it was a scrappy game but there was one key moment that separated yeah. Leinster it was a glimpse was, of quality yeah it was one try it was off a line out it was off set piece uh, Ross Byrne puts a little grubber in which Hugo Keenan makes great play to get on the ball and flick it across uh, for Larmer to score yeah. um, great score but uh, I think the key from that is Leinster need to be thinking about set piece striking yeah. and obviously they haven't got the best personnel in terms of passing the ball but just off scrums and line outs working a little bit of shape working the extremities if need be with a kicking game but trying to probe at the Munster defence Couple of couple of clever set piece moves would do this team no harm in terms yeah. of getting tries, and then obviously in the latter end of the game when you're bringing on your Sextons and your Furlongs, 
then you can sort of rely on the multi-phase a little more, I think. But with McGrath and Burning to start the game, you're looking at, like, I don't think a multi-phase is going to work that well. You're looking at a, a lot of kicking and mm-hmm. then a lot of sort of early, early, tr- early phase strikes. So you talk first, second, for third phase offset piece. And if yeah. that fails, I think you're kicking the ball. And yeah. that's the reality of it yeah. for the side that Leinster have picked, I think. True. I think if there, there will be cross kicks on the offing, um, given yeah. that, given the personnel again. Ross Byrne loves a cross kick and Dave Kearney feels them very well. So like in terms of mm. your strike moves or, or if your strike move fails, things like that. Spec- like just, just little punts like that, they have quality. Keen- between Keenan and uh, and Kearney, there's actually good aerial uh, quality there in the back yeah. three. And I think compared to Mike Haley on the other side, I think there's definitely a decent matchup there between Keenan and Haley. And I, I would back Leinster to try and exert a bit of an edge there yeah, in the aerial kick contest with, they can kick with quality in and yeah. have that be the way they get on the field well, definitely like, it's definitely it's an all-ireland clash so kicks are very much yes. very much part <laughs> of it especially if it wins and rains i think both sides will be looking to put boot to ball and uh, it'll a lot will come down to that back three and keenan's been in, in sparkling form but so too is Haley. Haley grabbing that lovely solo yeah. try a few weeks back looking very good so there could be some real quality on show in terms of just the aerial dynamics totally totally um, we are we are burying the lead here though because what this match is really is a matchup of quality, quality forward packs. Yes, forward packs um, that are too much for the rest of the league to yeah, deal with. And, and, and that's why even in stuttering showings from either of them, yeah. like the Benetton match for Ulster, for Munster or the uh, the Dragons match for Leinster, they tend to come out on the right side of the result because forwards win matches and both of these sides have mighty packs. Yeah, indeed. And from Leinster's point of view, I mean... If they if they need they need to be bullish they need to scrummage well they need to execute a, a dynamic and efficient line out drive I think the line out mall will be huge obviously Munster pose a threat in that area I think the performance of Devon Toner running mm. that line out Dev Toner for me has almost like a tight heads role in the yeah. sense that like first second and third priority is your set piece work yeah and then you know we'll let the boys worry about it let him look a little loose if, if yeah. he's a little loose in the loose that's okay yeah. as long as the line out is a rock exactly um, he needs to nullify the serious serious danger of Ty Byrne and Peter, Peter Amani and then John um, Klein's no mug in there yeah. either like it's a really high caliber line out unit that Munster are bringing here yeah um, so, so that, that's, that's the, why he's there in the absence of James Ryan I think that's yeah. why the Leinster staff have seen him as a little undroppable given like his form mm. hasn't been particularly great but they yeah, need a guy you, in the you line out. really put Ryan Baird in there and have you know him call the line outs or have Fardy call the line outs it's just not as good yeah. uh, as good as Baird is it, it, there would be a weakness there that Munster would be keen to exploit yeah. so uh, Dev's form is going to be very very important and it's also just on like the, the furlongs of the world the Ruddocks of the world Cone and Van der Fleer yeah. play their best game nullify uh, Munster's best strength and what Leinster have done in their best days against Munster is turn what usually is a dominant area for Munster into a weakness. Yeah. Like Munster have a great, great scrum. One of the best scrums in Europe. Yeah. If Leinster can get on top of them there, if Keane Healy can have like Keane Healy against John Ryan is a that's high a, level that's matchup. A high level. That's international um, caliber matchup yeah. on one side of the scrum. And then to be honest, on the other it's pretty good as well. Yeah, Crowley quarter against quarter. quarter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But Leinster like those matchups. Though mm. theirs are the guys who have the international experience. Yeah. And if they can get on top of Munster at the scrum, if they can nullify their line out threat, if they can make sure that Munster aren't winning those tight exchanges and aren't winning those tight contacts and yeah. um, they could take away something that that has been truly sort of dear to what monster do yeah uh, and and that can be enough and has been enough to to win the game for them yeah. so season's gone by so i definitely think the forward pack is the is the biggest area of focus for leinster yeah. and and the defense which is actually yeah. what this leinster side have been all about for pretty much the last two Couple seasons years, yeah. yeah um like they haven't actually been playing the most enterprising offensive footy since Probably they they won in twenty eighteen. I think the, yeah. that was the last time we saw a Leinster side really attack with verve and and kind of really high They've high probably level done it in moments, patches, but not, but not, not over for a season. season no, yeah. whereas what they have done for the last two seasons is defend really really well, like as yeah. well as any club side in Europe, kind of well. And and they're not a jackal threading team. That like they yeah. have they do have jackal threats in there. If a guy is completely isolated, they will pinch the ball on them. But generally, the system is just whoever makes the tackle immediately releases and rolls away and rolls like way away from the rook to spring back to his feet and get back in the line and they are, they are so so good at two a man getting back in the line and presenting just a blue wall across the uh, the pitch and very often if the attack is a little blunt on the other side yeah. they'll just swallow that up and, and exactly. they, what they're going to try and do is p- create a little bit of pressure you, you'll see Josh van der Fleer shoot out a line and set that line speed pressure Joey Carberry when I he's on the ball Sean is outside. Um, I, I, I'd imagine those two will be working in tandem on 
the 10 12 yeah. axis because as, as, as soon as you as soon as you shut that down monster will kick it that's yeah. essentially it so the, the equation is if they can hold their shape hold their feet shut down the 10 12 axis for monster yeah. they're then they're going to be on fielding kicks yeah, and just, yeah that's the defense no duty. no no cheap meters as well if, if yeah. they can get on top of the contact areas if the likes of reese ruddock can collide with them um, with cj stander or gavin coombs and have that be a favorable collision for leinster yeah. as in you're it's a slow tackle there it's it's either like a little bit a little bit of soak or either on the gain line yeah um, those kinds of tackles just Munster have moved the ball very well this year but it's all been based on a foundation of four I think, I think that you could say the um, same for Leinster but, but yeah. in, in, the, in the occasions where Leinster have put together some nice sequences of hands like it's all born of just yeah. dominating the, the, the opposing team up front which is why it's a little caveat it's like when you watch mm. an Ireland team run in six or seven or eight tries against Italy and you're like well, okay. Yes. Nice try, but like we won every single contact. You even juggled that ball and still swatted an Italian <laughs> yeah, side. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, well, what do we learn here? Yeah. Whereas the, in this instance, they will be trying to smash each other off the rhythm. And if the earlier se- uh, game in the season, which isn't that long ago because the regular season has been so condensed, is anything to go by, it'll probably be an attritional, relatively low mm. scoring, very abrasive, very combative uh, kind of game and, and it'll take yeah. one or two little moments that'll be the thing that separates that's it, the yeah. sides that, that's that's definitely the Leinster picture just yeah. to like win the tight exchanges nullify the monster f- pack edge little battles here and there play in the right areas of the field try and strike off set piece in mm-hmm. the early going and then be either in touch or just ahead when you can bring on your Little James Ar- Lowe, your, your Ryan Furlong, Baird, yeah. Ryan Baird, uh, Sexton, and Gibson Park, and then that sh- they would feel should be enough to see them home in a fourth quarter, and that's that's pretty much the Leinster plan. That's, that's the plan, all right. Yeah, um, be be a little bit smarter, be a little bit more clinical when it comes down to, but definitely be a match for for a very game and bullish Munster that you know you're, they're going to be expecting it because yeah. Munster, from their point of view, like they'll feel they have more than enough quality to match this Leinster side. And they'd be right, uh, because just on the evidence of this this year, they've played as well, if not better, in in parts of it, in terms of their ball handling, in terms of their offence. They put 50 on Zebra earlier on in the year, which, granted, it's Zebra, but it's unusual to see a Munster side rack up 50 points. 52 they scored in that game, and it's it just kind of shows that they're trying to attack a little bit more, and they've been growing this year. 100%, 100%. Um, In terms of specific areas, I think... The most, like, we'll talk about the offense as well, but, you know, this is going to be a forwards game and this is going to be a defensive game in many ways. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think a crucial area, I think, in terms of looking at how the game is going to go, if you're Johan van Graan, is how your team matches up against the sort of Leinster juggernaut in the red zone. Yeah. And that's uh, defensively in general, but in the red zone, Leinster have been, you know, they've been a little blunt for our tastes. But undeniably clinical in this yeah. competition in terms of the tries of crew. They looked they, a little bit like Exeter. A yeah. little bit like Exeter last season, just yeah. a lot of pick and jams and a lot of effective ones. Yeah, so tap it's... and goes when you get penalties on the five and just keeping it tight, relentlessly mm. keeping it tight and crossing the line. Very good latch play, very sophisticated in that in that department. Yeah. And that matchup between Leinster's sort of slow carrying and latching and Munster's, you know, attempted jackal plays and and robust defence is going to be very, very interesting. And I think it starts with the likes of CJ Stander just winning winning contacts. CJ has been so great for Ireland, flying out of the line and and landing big shots near the ruck. Oh, you just need to watch a little super cut of all the collisions he had with Billy Vunapola last week and it's just, you know, show his value in spades. (laughs) That's what he's there to do. Exactly right. And we've seen even Billy Vunapola, who's a star performer in that kind of area you know as good a player as he is if you can get in his face and smash him a few times he's not as good as he had been and that's Mm -hmm. definitely the picture for cj here in this in this game is to get on top of these leinster ball carriers smash them back weaken them Mm -hmm. and and render them a little blunt and that's when you know your tight burns can come in with one big poach you soften them up with some smashes and then pounce on them that's it's a good combination they have there between them and actually coombs as well has pretty telescopic hands and is a good man for a steal when when it's needed to be honest all of this monster pack do dial into both big hits and big steals. They, and that's what it is. Them. That's what yeah, it's yeah. all about. If they can do that, if they can edge yeah. those contests with Leinster, they'll think they'll think of themselves in a great uh, position. I think almost more than any other area. Yeah. When Leinster get in the red zone, what happens in the early goings in that game? Do Munster repel them? Do they get uh, uh, and take some confidence from that, or do Leinster do what they have been doing mm-hmm. and just slowly wear at Munster and that works? And I think if Munster can 
focus on one area specifically I think it would be that one yeah. nullify Leinster there and then all of a sudden we have a game here yeah and um, they definitely they, there's also huge potential in the midfield also with that pressure game but just looking at Delinde at Farrell Axis yeah. like those are two international calibre players there and that's certainly really defensively good, yeah. certainly defensively and then you look on the Leinster side it's it's Henshaw 12 and Rory O'Loughlin that's one international calibre player there yeah um, and, and Leinster and Munster have the edge there I yeah, think both physically and just in terms of quality truly um, and, and the two starting halfbacks um, for Leinster aren't wonderful passers of a ball so the Munster back three will have to be alert to the crossfield kick game yeah. But I would, I think Munster would be very, very comfortable with the capacity for Farrell and and Del Indy working in tandem to force Leinster onto the inside or to kick it wide. Yeah, uh, and, and basically they'll, they'll, nullify they'll, the they'll midfield. Take, they'll as take they'll take their chances. Area. Yeah, if yeah. Leinster aren't attacking them with verve in that midfield yeah. because they've shut them down. If they're forcing yeah. them narrow, then they can get their ch- chop and poach game going or their yeah. smash and poach game going. And if they if they're kicking it, yeah, they'll they'll back their aerial chops to to deal with a 50-50 yeah, and, Andrew and they'll way up there yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll be glad to see like even if it ends up being a great kick and it's converted like it's still a sign that your defence is working if you're forcing a Leinster team in a final to resort to speculative kicks yep. no, it um, shortens the field if you can yeah. cut off the midfield and, and stop Leinster from attacking there they mm-hmm. do obviously have to be mindful of Leinster switching up personnel and putting Conan out in the wide channels yeah. and trying to work that passing game out there you know Farrell still from 13 has to lead that Huge defensive, defensive line and make good job, reads yeah, yeah. at his best he's very good at it he is uh, yeah, and yeah, at his yeah. worst a little dialed out so sometimes his performance he can be a little is, flat footed sometimes yeah. that's that's all but uh, but when he's proactive and it is a final and they will be game I'd imagine he'll be coming yeah. out and making Rory O'Loughlin's life a living hell to be honest cause and Ross Burns yeah. you know a 10 does not like a good uh, a smart 13 to, against him like it, 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 it definitely shortens the field and shortens yeah. your options and, and that's definitely what Farrell is going to try to be bringing from a defensive point of view yeah um, um, as it was with Leinster, I think the forward pack, the forward unit, um, very, very important. Uh, Munster's scrum has been such an area of strength. It's been a penalty generator for them. They scrum with a real technical edge, like to, one that you wouldn't even associate with Munster, like in terms of it's not, your blanket it's not. assumptions of Munster. They're like... Uh, you know, very passion oriented, and when they're physical, it's it's sort of emotive. But actually, their scrummaging is extremely it's technical. It's very technical. Yeah, all yeah. of their scrummages are technical, yeah. and that's why, like when Kilcoin was out all season, you saw the chops of Cronin in that capacity. And yeah. then they keep picking uh, Archer in the regular season, even though he's very, very vexing. Mm-hmm. And John Ryan is probably a much superior player. But both that, of yeah. them are very technical scrummagers. The thing, yes. the thing that Archer does well is scrummage. Technically, he's a little, yeah. he's a little loose out in the loose. He can give away cards and stuff. Yeah, and he can, he can in, be a bit reckless in, in tight head. Um, in true tight head fashion he can be a penalty a tilted penalty machine yeah. who'll be liable to give a card away if things aren't going right for him yeah and listen as good as their scrum is and as technical as it is as well coached as it is this matchup is as tough as it comes in Europe for right? we up against a Leinster front row that starts the game with Keane Healy and Andrew Porter and ends it with Ed Byrne and Tyke Furlong yeah. in a prop the matchups are so um, good Kilcoyne and Furlong on the bench means that though that's your yeah. backup your backup matchup on that side of the scrum it's crazy yeah obviously you know if Munster can can edge the scrum battle that would be huge for them and that's that's very much their the picture that they want but just not allowing Leinster to do what they have done and, and turn it around on them and yeah. get penalties off them and just dealing with John Ryan from John Ryan's point of view like it's you're locking it down you're dealing with Keane Healy who's been scrummaging really well at Six Nations level yes he has you've got to deal with him you've got it like it's not about overextending and trying to win penalties it's just about dealing with what Leinster are bringing keeping yeah. the scrum solid and then obviously Cronin if Cronin feels an edge on Porter he yeah. can attack him there um, but by and large it's just about not not bleeding too much up there. Yeah, not the other not, t- is, not tilting is, yeah. is a huge factor because it can happen. Like Munster at their worst, and you, you see it even in the regular season. It, it, they have little sequences where where one penalty can lead to five. Yeah, uh, very quickly. And Leinster are ruthlessly efficient, even when not playing well at punishing those kinds of yeah. mistakes. And they're uh, the other thing about Leinster, just their temperament and their defensive system is such that they don't tend to give those penalties away. They're not as combative at the breakdown. They're rolling away very quickly. So what what can happen is that you can kind of get good yardage on the inside. And Munster should be trying to kind of pick and go and, and force them in, in like yeah. force that defensive system to kind of try and b- buckle a little a little bit inside, like compress yeah. a little. But uh, you won't be buying too many penalties off them certainly not no. tilted penalties so you cannot cannot be getting on the wrong side of the ref in no. this final footy it, it's very easily done I know there will be moments that will go against Munster but it's it's 
collectively their worst trade as a team and it sees them come unstuck in in, in clutch fixtures often is just their, capa- counts, their, yeah. their capacity for the penalty account to increase very quickly like it can be one penalty that can maybe be a bit harsh but it's it's the two ensuing ones in a row yeah. that are the real problem and they need to just cut that out and then they'll be they'll be well in a match for for Leinster but a, yep. a silly penalty could decide this so they need to keep their hat on totally agree with that um, while the scrum isn't the most favourable matchup for them the line out the other set piece is going to be an area that they look to attack um, Leinster yeah. scored their only try that they got against Munster back in January in the regular season meeting between these two sides off a line out yeah. uh, it is their primary weapon uh, from which they like to strike and Munster have all, phenomenal all the tools to, to um, disrupt it they have yeah. to in, in Tyburn and Peter Amani they have two of the best defensive line out operators in Europe, in yeah. Europe at the moment yeah totally yeah. Like very very good at so they have options at two and four and they can make it very very difficult uh, for Leinster to try and secure their ball and they should. No, they Again, should. Yeah. Same point with the penalties. Don't be flinging Tyburn across or Peter O'Mahony across the line out and giving away a penalty. Yeah. That's obviously silly, but within the margins, be very yeah, aggressive. But it, it, and it, those guys do need to have a license to play make. They, they do have a, need to have a license to read the line out to get on top of Toner. Yeah. Uh, to put pressure on the throw of Kelleher, yeah. um, with the, with only Tracy to come on as well. From Leinster's point of view, there is scope for them to to, to nullify that. Mm-hmm. And if they do that, it'd be huge. It, it's Leinster's primary source of attacking ball. They already like their matchup in terms of defending Leinster's attack. If they can get on top of Leinster's lineout ball, they yeah. have a real possibility of, of nullifying what Leinster can bring from an offensive point of view. That's true. Um, they have in 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 years gone by, in recent seasons, they have in spite of. Um, you know some some uh, patchy results fronted up to Leinster's pack uh, equaled the scrum and line out battle and defended them gamely and well for large parts yeah. of games showed themselves to be pretty much equal in, in most areas and yeah. then the key separation has either been their discipline has let them down or that they've just not quite been the savvier team well it's the, the offence for me yeah. it's the, the key separation is the offence like this is the area that they haven't delivered against Leinster mm-hmm. and looking just at some stats they, they've they uh, scored less than 15 points in four of their last five games against Leinster failing to score a try in three of those games yeah, that's so three cool. of the last five times they played Leinster they haven't come away with a try and yeah. I think the other one of the other games was just one try that was the game in, 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 in January just the one try Yeah. so yeah from four games one try and then obviously the other game figure out a, a way to get through this offense more than they have well, they do like, um, and they, well they do have a 10 now a different playmaker than yeah. they've had in all of those games Joey Carberry is is bags of potential to try and get that moving he also has a little bit of insider knowledge coming from a Leinster setup a few years ago he'll know broadly how, yeah. they, how they look to defend the field how they look to work the backfield having been in that backfield before so he, like the kicking game and passing game of Joey Carberry is pretty much the key fulcrum and he's going to be a pivot point like they do play a lot off nine and Murray's there he's going to be their primary playmaker but it, the quest, mm. like the big difference is that when, when they have that space to attack their 10 hasn't recognised it in times gone by be it JJ Hanrahan or Ian Keatley or mm. whoever was in that 10 shirt hasn't had that that yeah. clinical edge and it's it's going to be on Joey Carberry to try and do it for them this time yeah 100% Joey's form is going to be telling and you know he could in, in, in an ideal world you know he could have a, a, a coming of age day where he outclasses the Leinster counterpart and puts himself in, in, in the fold he's another guy who you know the, the 10 stakes for the Lions are so open at the moment that you know an insane run where he wins this game and you know takes Munster to a European final and who knows he could be a bolter yeah. so you know he's that talented so it's definitely a big game for Joey. Um, the other area that the Munster offense, I think for me the primary area that the Munster offense needs to develop is is tempo. Yeah. And it has to do with the fact that Leinster's defense isn't a jackal threat. That yeah. they that they are very soak heavy and they are quite uh, they they drift really well. They do come up in a line, they shut you down, but their tackle bodies up spread the field yeah. and the way to counteract a, a defence like that is lots of quick rucks if yeah. you're not going to put your hands in the ruck we've got to make it quick and that's on Murray and the ball carriers and the latches and the forward pods in Munster uh, to, to adapt and you talk about Leinster being the smarter team this is kind of where it is like where Munster they do like to play slow they like a slow tempo they like to you know build the very phases very deliberate building yeah, phases exactly, yeah exactly which is easy to defend it's it's easy for Leinster to defend certainly and, mm-hmm. and while Munster can be very you know um, good in terms of protecting their ball when they're not moving the ball quickly you're not going to find holes in that Leinster defence that likes to just get up form the blanket come up make tackles up again you know if Munster aren't going to be quick to exploit that 
it's it's going to be a problem. They're not going to get through them, as we've seen in all these games gone by. Yeah. So it's on Murray and as as I think the leader of of sort of those forward pods and get just the quality moving. of the carry. But like if CJ makes a carry and he and he gets an edge and a tackle. And then he goes which to death. Which will happen. Yeah, and, and which will happen. Of course it'll happen. You need Murray to be there instantly. Another quick ball. Another short carry. Another good line picked by the likes of Ty Byrne. Or over the gain line. Do it again. Quick ball. Quick ball. Quick ball. And then... There get will the, be space. Yes, get the, Leinster, get the Leinster defense to compress a little. And then get the ball into Joey's hands. And try and get out wide to your yeah. Earls's and your Conways. Who, yeah. who can finish as we yeah. know. And we've seen Dale Inde kind of sweep yeah. right a pass and get an offload away. Totally. Farrell, seen, can, do Farrell can do that too. can do that too. They're physical and a little more rudimentary as a center pairing. But they're well capable of when there's space they're executing and finding finding it. But they need to create it. Yeah, you're right. With, with tempo mm. and quick ball. They are a little bit too contented to play slowly. And that yeah. freezes guys like Earls and Conway out of the game when mm. they do that because those guys, those guys are lethal like yeah. and, and Haley's in great form too and they should be trying to get their ball the ball into their hands and too often in games against Leinster yeah. they are frozen out out there on yeah, the wing even the kicking game even mm. the kicking game can be so enhanced by moving the ball quickly and using the width of the field yeah. like they can get Ty Byrne out wide get the ball to the extremities probe a little with Farrell and Byrne and, and, and Dale Lindy mm-hmm. then all of a sudden you have the option I mean they will use some Murray box kicks and that's fine you know they, they can have an edge mm-hmm. in that battle it puts huge pressure on the Leinster back three mm-hmm. Larmer obviously had a spotty game against Munster the last time out under those under box the high kicks ball. Yeah. Um, but you've got a real weapon in Joey Carberry a technical kicker of a football who kicks off both feet yeah. um, you know he's a very good eye for the back potential field. for him to make Hugo um, Keenan's life a little bit living hell with yeah. that because he, he's a it's one of the things he's commented on having played at 15 is having a 10 who can kick off either foot yeah. is a nightmare because you're trying to read where he can go and it's very tough exactly um, right exactly right And uh, but, it, but it only works if the ball is quick and they're expanding the width of the field and stretching the pendulum and asking yeah. questions of it before he kicks yeah. because if he's sitting in the pocket off slow ball you know, there's very little he can do no. to work Keenan in the backfield. Yeah, and Keenan's um, fresh off playing every minute yeah. of the Six Nations and growing into it, and he looks an international caliber yeah. fullback now. And it's just, yeah, no, you're you're going to be he'll gobble that up if you do it on on Leinster's terms. But yeah. you need to set it up for yourself because again, the the acumen they have between Carberry's boot and Murray's boot. I think they have a superior kicking game to Leinster. Uh, yeah. In, on paper, they definitely do. Like, Ross Byrne kicks a lot of ball, but the only real world-class kick he has in him is the cross, the flat crossfield kick. The rest yeah. of them are kind of all right. Yeah. And Luke McGrath's box kicks are kind of all right. Uh, whereas Murray's are kind of world-class, and Carberry kicks off either foot and looks very world-class when he's dialed yeah. in. So, so it's, yeah. it's a tactical thing, and it's a, it's a change in mindset. Mm-hmm. But when you talk about teams being the smarter team, that's what you talk about. You know, there's an element... What's the... I don't even know if it's an Einstein quote, but that sort of memed internet quote of like, the, what's the definition of insanity? Doing is doing the same yeah. thing over and over and expecting different results. Yeah, and this monster team have definitely been guilty of that. Yeah, they need to they need to change it up. They need yeah. to be quick. They need to be sharp. They need to use the width of the field, and they need to be innovative on offense. And they've been that in patches, but they need to be ready for the fact that the 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 platform, the perfect platform that they've been able to give themselves against the likes of Cardiff and the likes of Scarlets and the likes of Glasgow isn't going to be there mm-hmm. and they need to probe the extremities regardless yeah. and keep the tempo high regardless yeah. and and that's that's the real question they've yet to answer in this fixture and it's it's certainly I don't know if you'd be confident in them doing it, but I think they need to do it if they have to win the if game. If they're to win against yeah, this yeah. Leinster, this this very very impressive Leinster defense yeah. that'll take some some manipulating to try and get through or around, and they yeah. they need to try and do that. Yeah. And um, with all that said, how do you feel it's going? How do you think it's going? Um, I feel and think they're different things, aren't they? Yeah. Um, it's very weird when you know they've. It's literally Six Nations was was. You know, last, week. last week it's a six day turnaround to the Six, six Nations. Nations game tonight it's a Six Nations <laughs> game tonight yeah we yeah. don't even know where the Six Nations has gone and we have a final that we're talking about so that, like both of these teams are out of sync in that way it's, yeah it's and like it, recent that, form doesn't really inform as much because a lot of their key playmakers for both are just re-injected yeah. to the team like you have yeah you know, your guys like Ty Byrne straight yeah. back in there your guys like uh, Henshaw up straight back into the midfield that will change the dynamic for both yeah, yeah. If, if I'm honest I've sort of been down on Leinster a little this year and it's probably harsh because they are still you know a, a, a brilliant brilliant team I, like I would be a little worried about the matchup on paper uh, certainly with the starting teams I, mm-hmm. I don't love Leinster attacking this Munster defence I don't know if we'll have enough to get through them I think Munster's halfbacks are superior. I think Munster's back row certainly has the potential to to win its matchup. Although that right. back, that back row battle is going to be I superb. I think their centers are superior. Uh, their cent- their, their starters, starters look good, yeah. um, for sure. Leinster obviously have their their strengths as well. Um, 
in in the tight in the tight areas. You know your Keen Healy's, your your furlongs to come on. Springing furlong from the bench could yeah. be a massive difference That's maker. The thing. Like the bench is where Leinster have the edge for sure. Like you know you talk about Baird and Furlong uh, coming on on the field and Ed Byrne. Um, and then uh, potentially for Munster, you know, Billy Holland, Jack O'Donoghue, who's still a little green. Uh, you know, your Kevin O'Byrne, I don't really rate as a backup hooker. Yeah. You know, there is capacity for them if it's a tight game to come unstuck. Yeah. Uh, in in the in the final quarter. Yeah. But I think it's a tight game, and I'm not sure. I could see it going either way. But you know, as a Leinster fan and a lover of Leinster, and and certainly a, a lover of this rivalry and and our successes in it, I don't. Ha- it's bizarre because I called England to beat Ireland, but I guess I've been conditioned to expect that a little more <laughs> from Ireland. Yeah. But yeah, from Leinster, it probably just hurts my soul to think of us losing at home in the RDS to Munster so I, I'll have to say Leinster in, with a with a fourth quarter pull it out of the fire yeah. for a long Sexton yeah. winner yeah, yeah. I, I'll go with that I think Leinster will will get the job done in, in yeah in, in not, not, not entirely their own way I, I'm I kind of hope it's just a better contest than it was earlier like as as tight it was a good contest earlier in the season but it was 15-13 and it was scrappy do mm. stuff oh, for I, most of it I would, I, it's yeah. finals footy I would hope we see a little bit more on offence from both sides yeah. than we saw in that game totally um, and yeah well ultimately what I want to see is Leinster win it yes. but I definitely see I can see the worrying signs on the wall like that, that defeat last week to Ospreys was coming for Leinster totally. um, like we were, that, it was oops. a miracle we hadn't lost in, yeah. in, in, during that Six Nations period yeah. we were playing such poor rugby indeed I know yeah. it was kids but we really were indeed well. yeah no I don't think we've been yeah. playing as pretty stuff so like if Munster put put it all together they, they definitely can uh, yeah. unstick us but, but will uh, they but will they is the question yeah. and I, my, my heart and head my, my heart is sometimes at odds with my head but I'm going to go with it anyway and yeah. say that Leinster take the win but it, I think it will be a one score game though it, yeah, it, it's no, going to be a scrap it's, it's going to be elite, elite packs and elite defences and then the question mark is who can which offence can be enterprising and, and overcome the the the, the capacity of the other team to shut things down and, and come up with a winning score so yeah we'll say Leinster but uh, it's going to be a great great, great, great game uh, I think it's Premier Sports uh, in the UK and then obviously Air Sport in Ireland that's mm-hmm. tomorrow 5 o'clock in the evening I wonder if Supersport have it in South Africa they definitely should because if you're a South African and you're watching this you know you've got the Rainbow Cup coming up yeah. this is the Pro 14 final this is kind of what you're up against so yeah. uh, it'll definitely be worth viewing if, if, if that's where you're based as well and, and just generally it's a club final between two great historical sides lots of test match players uh, should be a really really great game so be sure to tune in if you can absolutely all right, guys. We'll we'll see you at the next one for next week's show, where we'll be reviewing the uh, the Six Nations that was. And uh, yeah, we'll see you then. Bye. 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 Thank you very much for tuning into the Overlap Rugby Podcast. If you're new here, please do like and subscribe and ring the bell as well, so you'll be notified when we upload. But mainly, drop a comment down below as well. We love hearing your thoughts on the rugby. Cheers.